You're listening to the Pharmacy Podcast Network. Are you a pharmacist or a pharmacy industry professional who wants to open your own pharmacy business? What are the best steps to opening and operating your own pharmacy? What type of pharmacy should you open? How long will you have to wait before you can launch your own pharmacy business? The RX Owners Podcast is all about pharmacy ownership. This podcast will guide you on the journey to becoming a pharmacy owner and provide valuable insight and direction about running your pharmacy business successfully. The RX Owners Podcast is part of the pharmacy Pharmacy Podcast Network, the first internet radio station dedicated to the business of pharmacy. Now, let's listen, learn, and take the lead in pharmacy together. All right, everyone, welcome out to Owner RX Podcast. You got your host Joe Alsobrook here. With I'm um, joined with Sid, who's going to be helping us with some of our technical production, and then we've got a very special guest, Tony Maracas. Uh, Tony's joining us from uh, Benzer, of course, and. He's uh, got a lot of experience bringing to the table, and what we're going to talk about today specifically and why we wanted to have Tony on was uh, immunization programs in your pharmacy, uh, how to implement them, some best practices, and some experience that Tony uh, Tony's had with them in the past. One of the things that stands out uh, to me with Tony is when I met him is, is his passion for what he does and, and trying to help and, and share the knowledge and, and just helping other people get where they want to be. And that was very evident on uh, Discovery Day that we had here at Benzer's headquarters uh, just right about, right out about a month ago. Tony shared his story with everyone, and I, you know, I, had, I know he had a lot of people engaged with it, and myself included. And Tony, um, share that story a little bit with our listeners here. Give them a little introduction to yourself. All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Tony Maracas. Um, I'm a vice president of franchise ops here at Benzer. I started my, I guess, uh, pharmacy career many, many years ago. I put over 40 years in with a, a large uh, drug company, and um, now I um, went with Benzer. I have uh, experience through ops and pharmacy uh, from uh, entry-level positions all the way up to the regional director job um, with that company. So I'm um, glad to be here with Benzer and try to bring some of that knowledge and experience and help catapult uh, our company here into the next level and get it going um, and make it as successful as possible. Well, Tony, thank you very much for sharing your experience with us here today. Um, you know, so in regards to specifically the immunization program, I um, wanted you to help share some of your takes on that. And do you think independent pharmacies should invest time and money on initiating immunization programs for their own store? Absolutely. Immunization is just another vehicle where independent pharmacies can make sure that they're taking care of their patients, their whole patient. It's not just filling prescriptions. There's other clinical services like immunizations, pneumonia shots, and so forth that they can do to help manage the whole profile of their patient, not just their prescriptions. Uh, and, and in addition to that, it's another income stream that can help the independent pharmacy compete. And the one thing that our independent pharmacies have over the big box is our pharmacists have time. Our, our patients are time starved trying to be able to speak to their pharmacist and for, uh, for their therapy, for their compliance. And what happens is in an independent pharmacy, our pharmacy have that time versus a big box that is more of a production of prescriptions, not so much being able to interact and build relationships. I think that's a good point, Tony, as a door opener and just kind of introducing yourself and your services to the customers as we have them in that consultative approach. Um, you know, so what time of year do you feel independent pharmacies should start immunization programs and are there maybe multiple times throughout the year for different programs? Well, you know, the best time is, is to start building relationships uh, with the different groups that you're going to uh, uh, that you're going to target, so it all begins with having someone that is very versed on immunizations and all the clinical services that you have. And what you do is you go out and you reach employer groups, churches, financial institutions, anywhere there are employees within a, a business. And what you want to do is you want to go there and speak to the person that the HR person and tie down those. Um, those clients and immunize their employees. What it does for you is that um, when you get someone that's immunized for a flu shot, it helps prevent uh, people getting sick. It helps with uh, from a payroll perspective. And you help them over on the operation, make sure their employees come to work. But the best part of that is as you lock those 
those employer groups down or those churches, but you're giving back to the community because you're helping people stay well. And at the end of the day, our focus is healthcare, being healthcare providers to make sure our patients stay well. And immunization is a huge, huge way to do that. And at the same time, uh, it benefits the, the pharmacy and the patient. I think those are great points, obviously. I think that, uh, you know, with the immunization programs, can you, know, can you elaborate a little bit on how independent pharmacies need to start the program? Like how should they go about managing and maybe even the approach to some of these organizations? So again, I, I think the biggest thing is that you have to assess your demographics, where you're at, what's available to you. And if you start in May and June, which is the, the time to do that, not so much ordering the, va the vaccine, is start locking people down. You get them to sign a, a contract, so that way you know how many employees. And the, the, the biggest thing here is that they're not gonna come to us, our pharmacists are gonna go to them. So you set it up on time slots, you set up the days that it's comfortable for the employer or the church, and you're going in, our pharmacist will go there with someone and they will immunize everyone that is there that day. We can do it. If you have a big group, you could do it in two or three days. I remember my other job that we had at a, a facility that had over 650 people. It took us three days with two pharmacists and we vaccinated all 650. Uh, they were paid out of their insurance, so it was good to the employee. And the employer groups, when you think about that, the themselves, uh, the benefit is so big, again, not only from an employee standpoint that we really care about our, our people, but from a financial uh, 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 prospering, if you want to call it, uh, helps them also. You know, those those are very great points, too. I mean, as far as, um, you know, the actual process, like you've got the group, you've got your days, you went out there and you marketed May through June. You know, what would you say are some good steps on the process to making it flow smooth? Because obviously they don't want a lot of disruption to the workforce and, you know, you don't want a bad experience as you had that consultative approach. Well, you let the, the employer group or the church dictate time, the amount of people that they can uh, take off the, off the work, off the sales floor, or whatever it may be. So they dictate the time and we follow them. So if they say on a certain day, I can only, um, you can vaccine. 10 people, then we'll do 10. So whatever whatever works within their guidelines, uh, that's what we would do. We don't go in telling them when we're available, it's when they're available and we make ourselves available for them. And then at the same time, uh, the CDC has VARs that they've got to fill out for each employee, uh, their insurances, all those different things. But the kicker here is if this is done correctly, when your pharmacist is there immunizing a patient, that's the time this is the biggest, to me, the biggest give back is not only you take care of the patient, but build a relationship with that patient. While you're immunizing them, you should ask them about where they get their prescription filled. Do they have, do they do it in multiple pharmacies? Uh, can you bring all your, all your prescriptions to us and let us help you manage your, 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 your prescriptions, your therapy, your compliance, and at the end, at the end of the day, we want to manage the whole, the whole patient, not just some of those, those prescriptions. And at the same time, you can tell them about all the other clinical services that we provide. So it becomes not only a, a, a um, vaccination session, but it also becomes a, um, a healthcare provider session where we can help manage the entire profile. That's a perfect point, Tony. I think, uh, you know, managing the whole patient experience gets back down to exactly what we do and why we do what we do, and that's being a health care provider in the community. Well, now that we've done the immunization program, you've some of the key takeaways, you marketed it properly, you had a great experience with the business because you were able to set the appointments, stagger on how many, the employers felt the what's in it for them with their basic care for their, uh, their staff, attendance and productivity, prevent sick time. That's all nice and fine. You wrapped it up in a nice bow. The business is happy. You're happy. What's next for the business? What's next for you? Okay, well, so I think that every year you want to make the program bigger and better. And, you know, you if you did a good job and you gave a good experience, like we talked about, to the, whoever your, your clients were, um, every quarter going forward, you should reach out to them and just as a, a courtesy call and say, how are you doing today? Just call and make sure everything. Is there anything we can do for you as your pharmacy? And that way you don't lose the contact. The second piece of that is while you're there and you're interacting, 
then you should ask your, your clients, hey, is there anyone else you know that, that would be interested in doing this? And all of a sudden you get referrals. So that's how you build a business because the folks that you're immunizing and you took care of, that experience again was a very positive one. You took care of their folks. And you know what? They're gonna say, you know what? We do know this person. Or I remember one experience was a bank. Uh, one, one of my st uh, stores, um, it was um, uh, one of my relatives who worked there. And I was talking about immunizations. And she says to me, wow, I wonder if we could do that. I said, well, can I talk to your, um, your bank manager? Went in there and uh, there was only seven people. So we had a store across the street. We went over and immunized them. But because that bank manager uh, was, so, was so impressed how we did it, we ended up getting like 10 more banks of seven or eight people, but that turned out to be almost 100 immunizations, and it was quick, easy. So the referrals, it helps you build your business for the next year. So if you set a goal of how many new, new uh, patients you're going to be able to do or new groups you're going to do, you'll be surprised if you do a great job, which we will. Uh, I think that that gives you the part of where, you know, where's the limit? Well, there really isn't a limit if you're doing your job as we grow as an organization exponentially, we should be able to grow in our immunization program it's the same way and be able to be a great healthcare provider for the communities that we serve. Perfect. Perfect, Johnny. The referrals are lifeblood in, in, in almost any business, but especially in, in one like this with the healthcare provider and the community service that we do. I think once, uh, the one thing we know, business owners know other business owners. Absolutely. Right? And, and you brought up a key point with the bank, and you got more banks as a result, so I think that fits in there. Um, also, if you're dealing closely with the HR staff most of the time, um, HR people are in associations and in groups with other HR staffs and other businesses. So I think going in for the referral after you wrapped it up and put it all together is essential to making it grow. That's a very great point, Tony. Well, folks, we really appreciate your time. Uh, you know, to wrap this up, some of the key takeaways is make it effective, market in your community, uh, approach your organizations, your employer groups, your church, your financial institutions, and you're offering to come to the business so you're making it less of a burden on them and their staff. Make appointments and stagger for the employees based on how many. Set up a nice exp uh, user experience and a, and, a, and a customer experience. And then, uh, you know, the employers, you know, make sure you're, you're passing through what's in it for them, what's in it for the business. It's time and attendance and the care and well-being for their staff. Um, I think it's a no-brainer that this is a very good uh, idea to so someone to impl implement one of these immunization programs and Tony if they wanted to reach out to you where would they be able to find you if they had some questions or something uh, some tips that you could share to them my email address is tmaracas at benzerpharmacy.com so uh, you can reach me anytime on that email I, uh, I look at it several hundred times a day uh, so uh, I'll be able to respond in anything you need any questions or any direction you might, uh, you might need and I appreciate you guys having me on today Thank you very much, Tony. And uh, my name is Joe Alsobrook. You'll hear from me on some future episodes as we bring more experts like Tony to share some of that experience with uh, with you all and grow this uh, grow this movement, healthy independent pharmacy owners. Thank you all. Thank you for listening to another episode of the RX Owners Podcast, part of the Pharmacy Podcast Network. To learn more about the exciting opportunity of owning your own pharmacy, be sure to check out rxownerspodcast.com and be sure to follow the Pharmacy Podcast Network to learn all about the business of pharmacy on Instagram and Twitter. Follow at Pharmacy Podcast.